Today's video is a review of Aurora Rising. If you haven't read this book, you probably shouldn't watch this video unless you're not going to read it because there will be spoilers because I say review, but really it's just, hey, I want to talk about a book I read and liked and I'm going to do it on the internet. If you're wanting to know whether you should read it or not, I'm just going to say read it. This is full of spoilers. So spoiler filled review about Aurora Rising. Here we go. It says the year is I don't need to read this out, I just said no spoilers, so you've already read it. I'm gonna read it out, I don't know. Okay. So the year is 2380, and the graduating cadets of Aurora Academy are being assigned their first missions. Star pupil Tyler Jones is ready to recruit... Recu blah, 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 blah. Star pupil Tyler Jones is ready to recruit the squad of his dreams, but his own boneheaded heroism sees him stuck with the dregs nobody else in the Academy would touch. A cocky, oh, that could have been worse. A cocky diplomat with a black belt in sarcasm. A sociopath scientist with a fondness for shooting her bunkmates. A smartass tech whiz with the galaxy's biggest chip on his shoulder. An alien warrior with anger management issues. A tomboy pilot who's totally not into her squad leader, in case you were wondering. And Ty's squad isn't even his biggest problem. That'd be Aurora G. Lynn O'Malley. The girl he's just rescued from interdimensional space. Trapped in cryo sleep for two centuries, Ori is a girl out of time and out of her depth, but she could be the catalyst that starts a war millions of years in the making. And Tyler's squad of losers, discipline cases, and misfits might just be the last hope for the entire galaxy. Nobody panic. I think that's a great blurb. I like, I don't know how people write blurbs. It's so difficult. And then they've got they're not the heroes we wanted, just the ones we could find. So I'm not really sure what I'm going to start with. I'm just talking about random things, probably. I will start with what I loved most, the characters. These misfits that I just mentioned on the back of the book. All the characters banter all the time. It was so entertaining. I don't even think it was the plot that kept me reading. It was the characters. Especially, I have to say, my favourite character was Finn. I loved Finn. He was hilarious. He has a bio suit. So I think because his bones didn't develop correctly or something. So he wears a bio suit. They had him still being active in the plot and it was great. And then there's, um, they didn't specifically categorize his sexuality. Like that's not really something that this universe takes into account. That was especially obvious with Finn. That was really good to see. Tyler, it was good to see a all-round perfect character pretty much not turn out evil. I feel like if a character is too perfect, they'll be evil. Either the main character and they're beautiful and they don't know it, or an enemy of the main character and they're beautiful and they know it, and they're not nice people. So it was good to see that Tyler, he was like an all-round like good-looking, smart, nice guy, and he wasn't evil. I wouldn't say he was the most interesting of characters. He wasn't my favourite character to read because his parts seem to be more about advancing the plot and a lot of the other characters I reckon seem to be more about showing their who they are and their characterization. I also liked Ori but I feel like that's just automatically the chosen one. You, it's, it's a, I, I wouldn't say any of them are the main character but I would say maybe Ori. It starts with Tyler but because Ori is like the focus of the story, I would say she's the main character, and I think you're more likely to like the main character or feel like they're one of your favourites. I'm sad to say my least favourite is probably Kat, and I don't know why, I think just, I mean, she didn't betray the team, but when I thought she was going to, I was like, oh, <laughs> why? So I was kind of glad they put a plot twist on that. I'm really excited to hear more about Zilla in the next book. At the start, she was portrayed as so almost robotic in her actions and she couldn't figure out human connections with the other people in the crew. And when you get to her point of view chapters, it would just be something like this, so short. But then at the end of the book, she's getting to know them more. She's kind of, it's not that she's coming out of her shell, I hate that saying. It's more like she's kind of understanding people more. And so there's a chapter at the end where she definitely has a lot more to say. 
And I think that was a great way to show that. <laughs> Look at this one. Scarlet was a really interesting character. I liked her too because again, like the good looking girl doesn't always have to be nasty or the main character. She was just really entertaining. I love that she had like 50 ex-boyfriends and they would come into the story every now and then just as like when she's bored, she'd be like, hmm, comparing something or rather to this boyfriend, comparing that to that boyfriend. Kel, however you say it. He was another good character. I want to find out more about him. I love that he was like brooding bad boy. I mean, no, he's not even a bad boy, but he's a good fighter. So that kind of puts him in like bad boy zone territory or whatever. Because he didn't really share that much about himself. He was always more focused on Ori. Like that we got little hints, little snippets of kind of what's going on with his past, but I want to know more. So hopefully the next book will go into that. There's a lot I want the next book to go into, let's be honest. I could just go through this book and say quotes that I liked from all the characters. Let's back it up a little. About four hours to be exact. I know they say to start your story at the exciting bit, but you need to know what's going on here so you can actually care about me getting vaporized. Because me getting vaporized is totally gonna suck. That was really entertaining to read because it's true and like maybe you don't always need to start at the exciting bit. And that's kind of, I thought that's kind of what they're commenting on here. But they did start at the exciting bit. There was a line later on though that I really wish they had started with. It was, every single person on this ship is dead, except her. Does that not raise questions? Does that not want to keep you reading? Yeah, I loved how well they integrated the other species into the stories. So there's the Sildrathi and there's the, the Betraskans. And Finn is a Betraskan. And you kind of find out as you go through how their society works. So I loved how Finn was always like, oh, my fifth grandma, my third mother. And I'm like, how do their family situations work? It was really something you want to find out about. They need a family tree for Finn. It will go on for ages. Doesn't he have like 300 cousins? But I loved their um, group dynamics. I also will admit that I shipped quite a few of them and it kind of changed towards the start and then I was like, oh no, I see how they're going to pair up. And Kat, I feel like she almost attempted to just not get along with them, to argue with them. Spoilers. <laughs> It was sad at the end when the group had to leave her because she was coming one of the like Rahim, Rahim. And that was done really well because it's always sadder when a character dies. I'm going to say dies because yeah, it's always sadder when you read it from their point of view, I reckon. Something that really got me. And I also felt like the whole book, it went like this. It was like banter, 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 cheerful, 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 banter, 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 cheerful, funny, laughing, 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 oh, 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 oh. And then at the end, it just went right down. And that was when I was about to go to sleep. And so I finished the book and I was like, oh, now what? <laughs> There's also just so much I want to find out still. Like, don't leave, like, it didn't leave on a cliffhanger, but there were still so many questions that weren't answered, and I want to know their answer. Oh, I have questions about the Eshvaran. I have a lot of questions about the Eshvaran. I really want them to find, like, ancient civilizations, like ancient architecture, ancient planets that they didn't know about. Who knows? I remember thinking that the Eshvaran were... I, I suspect that they were hidden in the fold, and that something to do with whatever the weapon is is something in the fold or close or will close the rips in the fold and i thought that the eshvaran were i don't know moving around in the fold i suppose and that's how one came to kind of not possess but like join with ori and that's how she got that power and maybe they can't communicate with people until they've spent ages in the fold but we heard so much about like if you spend too long in the fold you'll become delusional and have hallucinations and people will think you're crazy and you'll hear voices and like the only character that had that was Ori and because she spent so long in the fold but what she was hearing, what she was seeing was real, things that would happen. Yeah, I really just want to know what happened to the Ashvaran. Oh, all these like civilization, like I love history in fantasy and science fiction novels and how they can like integrate that into the plot. I love that. So I really want to hear what happened to the Ashvaran, how they're going to maybe communicate with them to find out what the weapon is. Mm. I was a bit confused about that because they made such a difference in stopping the spaceship from going anywhere except to the pirate place. The place they stopped where it had all the ships and that was where the Eshvaran was telling Ori to go. I didn't see much of a 
point for that place in terms of the plot. I still loved the banter and I still kept reading because the characters were wonderful, but I didn't really get what the point was of that place. And like, I know they had to find that trigger and then it turned out that Ori was the trigger anyway, that the Eshvara made such a difference to get them there, to stop the plane and not let them go anywhere else. And then once they get there, yes, it's a map of the planets, but couldn't the Eshvaran have just controlled Ori when a map was in front of her and like pointed to like Octavius, Octavio the third or something? Like, I just feel like the Eshvaran could have made, made it so much easier on them than having to find this trigger and then break it and then get this diamond and then project this map. Like I just, yeah. It was just such an entertaining read that that really didn't bother me. I still just kept reading because it was so entertaining. I loved the Gandalf references. Kel and the Sildrathi girl are already moving towards where the first Tanith and I stand by the door and Tyler's eyes are on me as he draws close. This is in Ori's point of view. I don't suppose you've had any combat training, Ty asks softly. Um, I say, I mean, I took a self-defense course at school. You cannot intend to send her down this, Cal says. Tyler glances at the taller boy. Give her a sidearm. Cal bristles at the suggestion. That is extremely unwise, sir. She will only be a liability. Hey, listen here, Lord Elrond, I begin. We face the depths of the unbroken, Cal says to Tyler, not even looking at me. So we may have ignored that one, but I'm sure many readers got it. Oh, later on he's teaching her how to use the weapon. This locks onto your target, he says, pointing. This will fire. In the unlikely event you actually hit someone, hit them twice more for good measure. Thanks, I say, but I learned to use a flare gun in my colony training. I can shoot just fine, Legolas. He blinks. My name is Cull, human. Who is this Legolas you speak of? I roll my eyes and mutter under my breath. Read a book sometime, you conceited son of a... I, I think this would have been so fun to write. Like, I just want... I wish they could have, like, filmed one of their writing sessions so you could just see what goes on. We also didn't find out much about the Star Slayer. I'm sure that'll be in the next one, but I... I don't want to have to wait to find out. Oh, another thing. I thought the protagonist in this book was really interesting. I also want to know if it really is on all the planets that were in the map or it's just on one planet and those other planets it was planning on moving to. And if it did get to those planets, how did it get to those planets? Because it can't travel via people because even the people who were Raham, the GIA, they weren't contagious. They couldn't pass it on. So I don't know how it got to other planets. Yeah.